Okay. So you really want to know, huh? Fine. I'm going to start by telling you this. And this is important, so listen up. Your entire life, this one and many others, you've been a god who uses its absolute power to make yourself powerless. Entire cultures, especially this one, have all been afraid of their weaknesses, supposedly. When in reality, they've all been afraid of their power. This goes beyond the matrix of reality. This is something much deeper than that. This is eternal. This is fully realizing your consciousness. This is infinite. This is evolution. This is our divine right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast, the Bootsy Greencast. Really excited today uh, to have a really, really interesting guest on the show. And before we get started, I want to uh, basically give a little shout out to my folks over at Content Safe. They're going to make this podcast available all over the blockchain <laughs> in all the deepest reaches of the internet just in case. <laughs> Not that we're going to talk about anything controversial necessarily other than, you know, being awake, aware, uh, expanding our consciousness, all these positive things, which I don't know, maybe big tech doesn't like that very much. But uh, I'm really, really excited and enthused to uh, introduce everybody to Truth Seeker. He's a hip hop artist. He's got a podcast as well. And uh, we're going to be chatting today and just kind of riffing it up and uh, talking about uh, his story a little bit. Truth Seeker, welcome to the podcast. Hey, bro. Thanks for having me, man. It's my pleasure, man. Thanks so much for, for coming on and talking to me. I'm excited to, uh, to connect and, and learn more about how you got to uh, where you're at now. For sure, for sure. Let's get it in. Should be good. We're living in exciting times, right? That's exactly right. Yeah. From what I understand, um, you know, uh, would you, how would you, I guess, how would you sort of uh, describe your philosophical stance? Because from my angle, it seems like very open-minded and, and unique. Uh, does it have origins in like Gnostic teachings? Um, kind of, if you don't, if you don't mind, yeah. just like, it, yeah. Tell us yeah. I, I refer to myself as a, as a Christian mystic. Um, you know, that's my foundation um, for spirituality as far as like whether philosophical or religious uh, grid is concerned, um, I've found um, that I can play in those realms, but it's not bound to that. If there is anything that resonates, whether you mentioned Gnosticism or any of that kind of stuff, um, I just look into that. And so I guess the name Truth Seeker, like wh wherever the truth is and whatever, you know, is relevant, whatever you know, remains. And so, uh, over, you know, my, my span and my journey, I, I started out, um, as a teenager getting into the occult and, and studying a lot of that kind of stuff and, uh, really bit off more than I can chew, um, <laughs> opened up portals to the other realm, man. And, uh, was being pulled in and out of trances by entities. And, um, I was going schizophrenic hearing voices and seeing things in the middle of the night and, uh, ha having beings appear to me and, it was crazy. I didn't know how to turn it off, didn't know how to control it. And so the only thing that I knew to do was to run to the hope that I had known in Christ uh, in the church a few years before that. And so I did that. I asked God to forgive me for doing all that sorcery and witchcraft and opening up these doors to demons. And um, God came back into my life and I rededicated it to him in September 7th of 2000. And so I've kind of been on the the path of, uh, you know, walking the Christian experience from, from that point, about 20 years now. And um, just over the years, my walk began to go a little bit deeper and deeper and deeper to researching maybe some of the books that were taken out of the Bible, other philosophical beliefs and religions that are saying the same thing as Jesus and maybe wording it a little bit different. So I'm very much open, a Christian at heart, because that is my foundation into spirituality, my safe place. Um, but it's open for the mystic side to explore and to see God in all things. Man, I think that's really beautiful. I can certainly relate uh, to having that as a foundation as well. I think many of us can, you know, a lot of us have come up in the church in whatever form or fashion. Some people have a little bit of a bad taste in their mouth. Uh, yeah. You know, I can say for myself, you know, I kind of, kind of did, you know, it's like my pastor yeah. hit on my mom, you know, so. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Or hit on you. I mean, they're going to have friends with that story too. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, obviously that's not Jesus's fault. You know what I mean? Like he didn't exactly. do that. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, as far as like a home and a, and a place to feel comfortable or a safe space or a safe place, as you kind of uh, put it, that it, it does feel really at home yeah. uh, to me. And I mean, Jesus being the figure that he is like, I mean, you can have your beef with uh, Christians or, you know, this sect or this group of people here or there who represent what they represent. But as far as a, a man who represented uh, something, I don't see how anybody could take issue with with what he exactly uh, came. <laughs> to, to That's what it comes about. down to. I look at, you know, true Christianity as a spiritual practice that started in the East and became a monopoly in a religion in the West. And so I try to look back to the earliest manuscripts in the earliest days of what they practiced as you know being followers of the way and, and that kind of thing so uh yeah i'm not a part of a church or an affiliation and i don't go to church or anything we have an online community of people who you know are into the same type of things and uh all over the world and we just meet online and, and do that kind of thing so Dude, that's really really cool yeah um so you're also a musician um do you want to talk a little bit about uh your your uh song craft your art yeah, 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 music. So uh, I started out again, you know, as a Christian rapper, I was in, you know, Christian hip hop music when I first started. And this was probably 2003. I was in Christian hardcore bands playing bass and a big hardcore scene here in Mobile, Alabama, Pensacola, Florida, and uh, started there, you know, booking shows, throwing shows myself, getting hundreds of kids out and just doing that. So started out as a Christian rocker, Christian rap until my beliefs and experiences got to go a little bit deeper there was some political stuff that i got into but then as i began to have other spiritual experiences and encounters and philosophies i began to put that in my music and very quickly it became unacceptable by um you know a lot of the, the my christian fans and people who see me as like a revolutionary christian rapper now we're talking about going into trances and meeting angels and ufos and plant medicines and all of these things that were truth to me and, and beautiful that I begin to articulate within my music as well. So I do spiritual and esoteric hip hop is what I call it. I like it. That's awesome. I love how it reflects too. I love that you're so open-minded to, you know, uh, entertain other uh, viewpoints, other experiences um, yeah. and incorporate that because, you know, growing up in the Christian church, we would hear about all these experiences that the apostles had and we would believe it. But the fact that someone else in, in real time right now could have it, that just didn't compute. Yeah. Well, well they, um, and, and I think many in Christendom still believe that they, they love those stories, but they think that they were um, just like out of the left field. And so when you really look into this stuff, you understand there's practices that facilitate the trance state. And I even, I even love that word because it's used in the King James Bible over and over. It says, I was in a trance on the Lord's day. And so they're thinking that these people are just walking along and just pulled into a trance versus there's mindfulness and meditation and techniques that you can do to facilitate the trance state. So that's the big difference there when it comes to, you know, interacting with angels and the angelic or leaving your body and going to heaven, like the apostle Paul did. Like these are, are practices that come from the East. They're, you know, which is where Christianity comes from. Follow it back to its roots, man. You'll see that these were mindfulness practices that, you know, help us to uh, communicate with the creator and all the beings uh, that are in between. So that's cool. So some of those practices would include meditation. Um, what else? What are, what are some of the other? Uh... Yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know that they're limited. I think we're still finding out a lot more that, um, you know, uh, that have been forgotten. Uh, and there's a lot of people who are looking into new things, creating new ways to do this and the next age and stuff. But I'm really... Uh, I'm big into a revival or a resurgence of what they had. Like I want what they had. So um, I would say breath work. I would say most likely some form of, of uh, natural psychedelics could be involved with some of this stuff. Um, and what I judge, I, 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 you know, things changed for me from being just a regular Christian and, and being real dogmatic and preaching the gospel in a certain type of way that we've seen it to where I just judge things by its fruit. Like go. what, happens when you do this 
whether it is psychedelics, whether it's breath work and meditation or kundalini yoga or yoga, like what is the fruit of an individual's life when they become vegan? You know, what is it? And so we get to see the, the, the results from that or the fruit. And Jesus says to judge everything according to its fruit, that a, a good tree is going to produce good fruit, a bad tree, bad fruit. And so we judge people off of belief systems. We judge people off the way that they look and the outward appearance, but God judges the heart. And that's how we're supposed to judge things too. So when I started doing that, it, it, it opened me up to be more receptive to really see God in everything, see God as good and in, in, in all the good stuff, but also see him in the bad as well. Um, but yeah, I think those would be some of the, you know, a couple practices that come from the East that I think could have been a part of early Christendom for sure. Yeah, I, I agree, man. I think that's amazing because, you know, there's this tendency to judge anything that seems, uh, you know, outside of the established order, I guess, or outside of just regular church practices, like going to youth group or, or what have you, you know, it's like, well, I mean, that must be, I don't, I'm not familiar with that. So it must be bad. It must be of the devil because, yeah. you know, to sit and, and, and to contemplate your humanity or to, to breathe in a certain fashion to oxygenate your blood cells yeah. in your body. Uh, but I mean, there's really nothing to it other than that. You know, it's just, it's breathing, it's mindfulness. It's, it's, it's basically, it could be a, a, a time for prayer, reflection and communing with God. It doesn't always have to have some, you know, negative connotation. Obviously, you know, I, I don't want to lump people either. I know plenty of people who are open-minded who are also mm -hmm. Christians. So, but I just, yeah. you know, there is also a, a large group that, you know, tends to be um, you dogmatic. Know, a little, yeah, a little bit more dogmatic. And then you got, so we grew up in um, like the, um, the Kenneth Hagen, Kenneth Copeland sort of vein, yeah. which I can't think, like, I don't know if you saw that video not too long ago, it went Copeland. viral on the internet of Kenneth Copeland and some dudes playing like heavy metal. Oh, yeah, yeah, metal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, there's nothing more apropos than TikTok. that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because, you know, he's like, just an interesting figure. I don't necessarily uh, trust someone like uh, Kenneth Copeland to, to, to <laughs> deliver the gospel to me. And, and also, you know, find that um, me personally, like my mom's a Christian, for instance, and uh, you know, she's got her, her ideas, but I also think that, you know, my experience in my relationship is something that's so personal that yeah. if you, if you want to put a label on it, you're welcome to do it. But like you said yeah. about judging the fruit, like, uh, you know, I don't necessarily, I don't need to share what happens in my prayer closet. Exactly. I don't need to share, you know, who I am at the deepest core or what my practices are. In fact, I think that God or the universe will entrust us more, the quieter that we are. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting topic. And I've also like contemplated that over the years, because I put this stuff in my music and talk about it openly. And part of me is like, you know, maybe you're kissing and telling. You know what I'm saying? Some of the things that I've seen and experienced over the years that I feel like I, I feel like I'm, I'm privileged to see, like I ask for this stuff and I've been able to experience stuff that blows your mind that, you know, it's hard to believe. And, mm -hmm. and even myself, I go back, is that really what you saw? Or did you see swamp gas? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, uh, <laughs> like, was I supposed to talk about this openly? But I guess if we're reading the scriptures, they did. Right. <laughs> like, you know, whether it was, you know, metaphors and things like that, or there were literal angels that, you know, came to them, or they hit them within the allegory of the scriptures as well. But, um, but it definitely, I see the fruit of it, again, talking about this stuff and how it's facilitating spiritual awakening, it's helping people to become more conscious, to go deeper, to fall in love with God, and, you know, just go deeper in, in, into the mystery of, of, of this life, you know, and so, um, I can champion that, you know, but I do ask myself those questions sometimes, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, I, obviously anything that helps or anything that you're, you know, compelled to do with your intuition, then yeah. by all means, I, that's you following the the spirit yeah. and your walk. So I think that's, that's beautiful. And each one of us is here for a different reason, but, um, you know, just thinking about, again, judging by the fruit, it's like, just because someone doesn't share their specific practice or their specific, you know, um, affiliation or ideology or, or what have you doesn't mean that they're not on the same page and the same team as you, you know? What, well, I mean, now you sound like Trump because they asked Trump for his favorite scripture and he said, well, that's personal. 
<laughs> and, hey, what's your favorite Bible verse? And he didn't know any Bible verses. So he's like, that's personal. <laughs> that's funny. It. Oh, dude, that's, man, he's he's a good troll. Nobody's ever said that I sounded like Trump before. So that's I've just I've never just, heard that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it. no, they were asking him. He was like, that's personal to me. I don't want to share <laughs> no, that. No. <laughs> like, I'm honored to tell you my favorite verses in the Bible. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I don't think Trump's a Christian. I'm going to go ahead on a limb. So I just went on, I just went on live stream and uh and said that and uh was really vocal about it and I've been holding back I try not to get too political but uh a lot of it's tied into spirituality at this point I don't know if you're familiar I mean you mentioned Kenneth Copeland and those guys but the the prophets or whatever who have saying that Trump was going to do 8 years and then Pence would come and do another 8 years and and uh, and the Christian community has has swallowed it hook, line, and sinker, mm-hmm. and it's a lot of QAnon conspiracy theories that kind of got watered in there, and um, it's really really strange. And uh, and people are just I don't know if people just want hope. You know what I'm saying? People are looking for whatever it is that would give me hope. And we're living in weird times, man. COVID and the government and all of this stuff that's going on. It's very strange right now, and people are looking for some type of hope. And so. The, the QAnon stuff really crept into the Christian community. And I, I just did a little live stream just kind of talking about that. Said the same thing. Trump is one of them. He's not one of you. He doesn't love the Lord like you love him. He doesn't, you know, seek, seek him in the prayer chambers and that kind of stuff, you know. Dude, it's seeped into the spiritual movement as well. Yeah. You know, like the New yeah. Ager movement, yeah. like as a lot of people have gone on the QAnon thing. And it's like, dude, how many times do these, uh, you know, uh, Q boards that's written by some anonymous person on the internet uh, have to be wrong before you don't believe it? You know, it's like, yeah. uh, well, it's just uh, uh, it's just optics. It's like, no, dude, it's, it's coming it's later. It was a later date. We got yeah. the date wrong, but it is coming. <laughs> you know okay yeah. it's a typo you know like i mean obviously all the statistical math is yeah but we uh we just messed up on the date but yeah i mean i mean anybody who's uh at a position of authority like trump i would strongly doubt that they have uh best interests at heart of, of the people trump's gonna be fine after all this i think he's being used <laughs> we as, on the other hand <laughs> yeah right i think he's really been uh, used as a um, a figurehead to limit uh the to, to limit free speech um yeah. as well as to you know just kind of keep people yeah. in a cage and also to um to basically um um dismiss uh certain ideas from going around and conspiracy theories, you know, and I do that in quotes. And some conspiracy theories are conspiracy theories. Others are well-documented uh, history, you know, yeah. fact, yep, yep. Steeped in fact. And I think when they bring those two worlds together and there's elements of truth and then, you know, untruth all mixed together, people get confused. <laughs> it's, yeah, no, I, I agree with you hundred percent. I do think that uh, this was scripted. I think that, uh, you know, kicking him off of Twitter it's scripted. They knew this, you know, and that's how they do that to pass legislation and other laws and just change the, you know, the, uh, the, the culture really, and what you can and can't say. And I was listening to a Christian mystic earlier, John Crowder. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but he did this whole kind of unveiling of the prophet stuff too. We, we kind of did the same live stream of just like, Hey, here's my opinion on what, why Christian messed up and following these guys and stuff, but his whole stream anything political he wouldn't say president he wouldn't say totalitarianism he wouldn't say censorship he wouldn't say any of those things on camera but he did this and and the word popped up like he was censoring himself for like an hour that he had already you know made it where the words would pop up so instead of saying president he would beep himself and the word would pop up and say wow this is what we've come to we there's certain things that we can't have an opinion on or even talk about but i believe it was planned you know it's always it there's it was in the cards you know why they're doing it you know how they're doing it there's different ways they could do it um you know but it's working you know we could see it so. We can see it though, and I think there is a lot of people <clears throat> that that can also see it. And I think that you know, uh, twisting public opinion or making it seem like more people are buying. You it wanted they, this, yeah, yeah. You wanted this. You wanted you wanted to kick Trump off of TikTok, not or Twitter, not me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, that the, that whole thing. I mean, I do I do agree with you, and and it's 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 a great way to just um, like I said, dismiss. Uh, certain things. And then also, you know, as we move f- 
forward, you know, cause that, that is dividing the community, like the, the Christian community uh, is being divided between this, yep. this Q narrative and, yep. and the yep. same thing is true in the spiritual community because you've yep. got in this sort of new age community, which is kind of where I've sort of hung out over the past couple of years. Yeah. Um, you know, there are people who are drinking the Kool-Aid and then there's also people who are just like raw rawing censorship. So yeah. here we are in this so big, weird, <laughs> you know, and it's like, yeah. you know, we know in duet with duality, it's this or yeah. that. Yeah. That's a very limited uh, sort of perspective and belief to understand and see a bigger picture is really what we're needed to do as spiritual people and, and, and see beyond, you know, this little uh, spat, this or that, this or that, you have to choose, you know, and it's like, yeah. that's, that's a forced choice. That's an ultimate, <laughs> you know, like we have more yeah. options than chicken or fish. You, you guys wanted Trump or Biden. No, we didn't. I wanted the other guys, you know, the other guys <laughs> seemed like, you know, like any of them, any of them <laughs> mean like, listen, I'll vote for you guys. Like I'm cool with it, but this is what we got. It's like, yeah, you wanted it. It's a trick, man. This is a game, bro. It really is. Yeah. I mean, as far as I can remember back, you know, cause I, I really was on the Obama train in 2008 and I was like, yeah. I really liked him. And then about 2010, I was like, he didn't do anything he said he was going to do. And then, you know, as I've gone on in time, I've seen more and more the theater of politics yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and seen it as that. And I think this is an opportunity, I think, for, for people to connect and reach out and start to build things that are outside of the established sort of uh, uh, matrix or the order uh, of, of things. You know, there's, uh, there's blockchain technology, for instance, which I don't know, maybe it's a honeypot too. The internet was, <laughs> yeah. we all went into that. But I mean, at the same time, there's, there's a way to uh, continue to build outside because getting in, into the system, it, it's just reinforcing these issues over and over and over again. And so we, what, what I think we need, the solutions is, are what we need to focus on. And I think there are more people who are aware of this, but again, they're twisting that narrative, mm -hmm. the social narrative to make more people think that more people want this or that more people believe in this idea. This is very reminiscent of what happened in Russia. And there's a documentary that was on, um, I think it was on like a mainstream channel called Hyper Normalization. And the basic gist of that documentary was that they twisted the narrative and the media in Russia so heavily that no one believed anything that they read or saw in yeah. the media, which made a, made a big mess. And so I think that's kind of what we're seeing yet again here in the United States. And then you've got a bunch of people who are angry on this side, yeah. people who are angry on that side. And, you know, we're actually the ones who are having to pay for all of this stuff, like the folks at the, at the, at the helm, they're going to be, like I said, Trump's going to be fine. You yeah. Know? I wonder, um, you know, you know, how, how long this has been planned. Like when we, when we look at like, remember just a couple years ago, maybe three years ago, um, the Joe Rogan podcast, like, like, you know, it, he had more viewers, more listeners than, Fox and CNN combined, like he's got more viewership than like Dr. Phil or any news or anything. And, and it wasn't just him. There was a lot more, even Alex Jones had more viewers than Fox and a lot of these guys. And so it's like, how do they, you know what I'm saying? Combat that narrative that people were going to Joe Rogan for their news, or they were going to Alex Jones for their news. How do they con combat that? And it almost seems like it was maybe a response to some of that. Like, hold on. If you say whatever we don't like, we're going to pull you. London Real had, you know, the, the most, you know, live stream viewers in history watching the London Real with David Icke. Uh -huh. They pulled it. They're pulling all of this stuff, all types of doc, not even pseudoscience, like, you know, what I'm saying legitimate doctors who were just given an opinion outside of the agreed upon narrative that's coming from those news and, you know, those people. And uh, it's very strange. And they're now they're silencing everybody's voice. And I don't, I don't think it's by coincidence and I don't think that it is natural. It is to, to keep them in power and, um, and to stay in power. And so where do we go from here? I don't know. I really don't know. You know, if I had the answers, I would say it, everything is an opinion, but I do say, I do like the fact that in the midst of these uncertain times, spirituality 
and my relationship with God and Christ and stuff is a lot deeper, is a lot stronger, and, and it means more to be an anchor in a times in times of uncertainty. I do think that um, you know conversations with people, even when we disagree or we look different or we believe different narratives or whatever, that we can still put that aside and come together to whether it's have a conversation, have a beer, whatever it is, and, and just meet together um, regardless of our differences. And so I've been seeing the beauty in that uh, even more. And so even though it's, it's, it's more few and far between now, because we have echo chambers and confirmation bias, whether you're in a, a, a QAnon group or you're in a Trump group or a Biden group or whatever, you're just kind of regurgitating the same information just to be, uh, listen, I have my views and my, you know, political views, spiritual views, religious views, whatever, but still we can, we can be friends, we can talk together and, and, you know what I'm saying, come together uh, in that. I've seen a lot of beauty in that myself. Yeah, I agree. I think what we're seeing right now is a struggle between, <clears throat> and in David, David R. Hawkins' book, Power Versus Force, he talks about levels of consciousness and states of consciousness. And he provides a, a really cool tool called the map of consciousness. And the higher states of consciousness are like joy and love and reason and these yeah. types of things. The lower ones are, of course, um, you know, uh, guilt and shame and fear and these types of things. But the pro what we're seeing is a conflict between people who are using force, forcing people off of social media platforms and, you know, silencing their voice in the physical world. But power does not stop. Like, good luck outsmarting God. I don't care who you are. I don't care what tools you have. Yeah. You're not going to you're not going to suppress uh, the spirit of God, you know, and however we want to. Um, quantify that whatever your specific belief system is if you if you if you believe in jesus or or just some uh benevolent sort of power i've tried to uh outsmart the universe uh and i've failed every single time i've done it a lot you know i've attempted it a lot and it just it never it never works out what was it a uh, uh, jurassic park right where jeff goldblum drops the water on his hand and he's like life will find a way yeah. right like <laughs> life will find a way power will find a way and the way that we i think uh, chart our um, our sort of uh, path is through those higher states of consciousness, which which involve love and unity and and uh, and peace and joy and bringing yeah. people together. You know, through those types yeah. of uh, yeah, I think that those oppressive governments and uh, and all that stuff even existed during the time of Christ and before. Like they, you know, John John the Baptist like would speak against Herod and his sexual relationships that he was in and, and they always spoke. So it's not, you're always going to have it with you. You know what I'm saying? It's always there. So to think that we're in some type of utopia or something where we don't, you know, but whatever you focus on, you know, you, you give it your, your attention and it becomes your reality. There's so much going on that, that even me and you don't know. Uh, and, and we, I'm sure we both feel like we know a lot, but there's so much go going on even behind that, who these people really are, who they're in bed with, whether we're talking about spiritual stuff on that or aliens or whatever, there is so much going on. So for me to act like I know and have a solution, I could just tell you what, what's working for me. And that's kind of what my podcast has been about as well. Just let me talk to individuals about what's working for them to, to, to maintain, uh, you know, solace and serenity through these trying times. You know, we've, many of us have seen this stuff coming, but you know, what do you do to get through it? Because not everybody makes it through, you know, in, 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 in one piece or even with relationships, you know what I'm saying? Let me de delete my social media because I know I'm too outspoken and brash when it comes to politics or religion. And I know, you know, just to use wisdom in all of this stuff. So that's been my thing. I've seen all this stuff coming, not for what it was or prophetically, but I knew that something was coming with these conspiracy things. And so I, uh, I made sure to like, not to entertain any of these videos and stuff like that early on the QAnon stuff. So that stuff didn't, I didn't even budge or phase by any of that. I was in it. You were, you were in it, you know, Obama, I got in it through Bush, all that stuff. And, uh, and that's when I really got into conspiracy theories, maybe 2008 or so. And, um, I, you see patterns, mm -hmm. you see the same, like the same stuff they were saying in Bush in 2008, they're, it's they're, they're, they're regurgitating it and, and, putting it out now for people in, in documentaries and videos. But the difference now is our grandmothers are, are 
you know, uh, conspiracy theorists and they're into QAnon and stuff. And that's the weird thing when it was just like a, a little pocket of people into investigate 9-11 or whatever the case is. And so now everybody is into it, which is the strange thing. Yeah, it is strange. I was talking to Matt Barker uh, on one of the other podcasts about how conspiracy theories used to be fun. You know, <laughs> they're not they're not so much as, as much fun. Anymore. It, they, they were fun, but they freaked me the hell out. I have oh, to yeah. admit they oh, freaked yeah. my wife. I freaked my wife out. FEMA coffins. They've got coffins where they're going to kill everybody and put us on on trains. And and then I'm getting into masonry at the same time. And we had friends who were breaking into Masonic temples and stealing all their books. Oh like God. we didn't play. We're <laughs> researching this and want to figure out what their what their agenda is. Listen, sure. It wasn't it wasn't peaceful at all. And uh and my wife was like, she was I, I was freaking her out, you know, FEMA coffins and FEMA camps and you know the King Alfred plan, they're gonna kill all the black people. I mean, you just name it, it's out there and you can make them up too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so that's the weird thing, all these forged documents and fake stuff, and it's like, that's listen, right. there is no end to that stuff. That's and right. as long as you know that, whatever your way in, you gotta get out of it. And, and live in some type of uh, reality that, that you have um, maybe some type of control over, even if it's just you and your family and your friends and whatever it is, you know, um, versus just being a victim to the elite government overlords or whatever the case is, you know, it gets crazy, you know that. <laughs> yeah, it definitely does. I remember like even Jesse Ventura had that show, a uh, conspiracy theory, you know, and I used to watch that all the time. Yeah. Like the FEMA coffins thing. I can just see yeah. those, uh, you know, those sort of things. Black happening. helicopters. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and now, you know, here we are, um, you know, 10 years later, it's, it's kind of funny how, uh, how things have evolved since then. But, uh, but yeah, I agree with you. You know, it's about uh, cultivating a, a sense of peace and working with these, you know, better states, you know, uh, communing with, with spirit, with God yep. and, and, and really focusing in on that. I believe there are solutions. I believe they come about, you know, uh, in unexpected ways. And, um, you know, I think the blockchain, like I said, the blockchain technology, some of these newer um, tools out in the new internet are hopefully going to be helpful, at least for a time, you know, maybe there are honey traps too, but at least, you know, things are constantly always moving. That's just the nature of the reality that we're in. So maybe we can use these as tools moving forward for communication, things like that, and reduced censorship um, and, 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 and see what those, you know, what, what those can offer. Like Float, for instance, is a social media that, uh, the Float app, F-L-O-T-E, that's a social media that's on the blockchain. It's built on the blockchain. So it's very censorship resistant. You know, you won't see uh, it smash down like Parler was overnight, you know, because like Amazon <laughs> doesn't own its servers. And so it's crazy. Yeah. It's just wild. Yeah. I mean, and then you've got people cheering it on who are socialists and they're like, yeah, well, it's a private company. They can do whatever they want. And I'm like, why don't we just buy the government then make it a private company and then we can do whatever we want. <laughs> you know, it's, it's pretty like, much. Hey, I think, I think that that's what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So corporation paid for by other corporations, partners, partnerships and yeah, yeah. Apple and all those guys. Um, yeah. I think Mussolini said fascism is when the corporation state basically um, are working hand in hand together. And so that's the definition of, 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 of true fascism. <clears throat> Yeah, I think it's always been that way. But mm -hmm. Agreed. You know, again, that's we're focusing on what's wrong. Focus on what's right. Again, you're talking about the beauty of, you know, your sovereignty and um, relationship with God and, and all that. And that's what I try to focus on it. But every now and then, I guess I need to come down off my high horse and, and be down here with the people. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, well, this... y'all got yourselves into, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> QAnon, <laughs> the hell is that? <laughs> yeah. It's pretty funny. Yeah. I, I mean, the fact that so many people have, have uh, jumped on that bandwagon, it was honestly pretty surprising to me. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. But you know, I mean, I understand people wanting hope too. There's plenty of hope. You know, the, the thing mm -hmm. is, is that, you know, if you're a Christian, the savior's already come and gone, man, you don't need another <laughs> one. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're waiting on it. They, Trump, Trump became the Messiah of Christianity, <laughs> man. Western you know, Christianity is crazy. Yeah, but I mean, look at that guy's track record, you know, like, uh, there's just they don't no care. Way. Every saint has a past. Every sinner has a future, brother. Come on, don't <laughs> hold it against me. That's fair enough. 
Well, tell, tell me a little bit about uh, your music and how you got involved uh, doing doing hip hop. Yeah, again, you know, I started out doing Christian Christian rap and uh, I traveled to hundreds of churches over the years and um, um, speak to kids and tell them my story about how I came out of witchcraft and some of the stuff I would do and stuff like that. So started out doing that, released my first album in 2006 and started putting out a couple little EPs and stuff like that afterwards and got on the political thing that was kind of like you know a lot of people go down the political route before they get spiritual so it kind of went down that route for a moment and then um started doing this the spiritual stuff and i guess around like 2012 um i found uh um the 2012 enigma by david wilcock which was a documentary or or lecture series that he put out which was amazing blew my mind talking about the third the third eye and leaving your body. I mean, he talked about everything in this two hour uh, presentation. And, and I started researching a lot of those terms. And so that took me deeper. Um, I was having these, uh, uh, I was looking up stuff about UFOs in the Bible. And this was before ancient aliens, but I, I think I heard it on a podcast or something and um, just started researching all that. And so started researching and having experiences and putting it in my music, man. And, uh, and that just began to go deeper and deeper and deeper into those experiences and articulating them and, and put it in my music. So I've been doing like conscious or spiritual music since 2012. So I've been trying to drop an album every year or so. And I got several under my belt, all of consciousness, leaving your body and spirituality and stuff. So that's awesome. Yeah, man. So how do you talk to folks who, you know, um, are maybe a little bit hesitant uh, to some of these experiences like leaving your body or entheogens or aliens, yeah. for instance? Well, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, just showing the benefits of it. You know, there's, there's a beautiful scripture in the Bible that says that every good and perfect gift comes from your father from above. And that's the fruit of it. What is the fruit of said experience you know are you more conscious are you more creative are you more loving do you treat your dog better you know what i'm saying so that's the kind of stuff that i that i want to see versus being very judgmental dogmatic short with people only like christians like i've been there so for me there is a night and day when it comes to you know my character and the way i see people in the world you know what you believe really re reflects on on how you treat people and your spirituality should be practical so first and foremost that's what it comes down to is is how practical is it and so if we're talking about uh plant medicines and stuff and just looking at the tons and tons of research of how it's helping people overcome addiction kick opiates get off of alcohol addiction and all of that stuff which is amazing. You know, that's the fruit of, of this. People who are dying of cancer, who are scared to die, scared of death, and they're overcoming their fear of death, which is inevitable. Right. And it's part of the, this human experience and human human journey where you can be you can become okay with that. And um, so, for, you know, seeing those stories and just going to WebMD or going to Reset.me and just looking at the the tons and tons of of research that's out there opened me up to. Uh, you know, to, to want to do it. I was scared to go down that path because of my, um, you know, years of, of dealing with the occult and, and other spirits that would mess with me. I didn't want to open myself up and be pulled in some kind of demonic portal because that's what the church would tell you, that this is demonic and you don't do this. this is how you open yourself up to demons or whatever. But you you read those stories and you read the proof and what happens to those people. And it's there's amazing life-changing story stories it is a, a medicine and medicines are for those who are sick and it's the jesus says it's the sick who need a doctor and god has given us all the seed bearing plants that you know th that are here and there's so many and there's so many scriptures that kind of back this kind of stuff up so to look at the research by itself and and, the, and again test the fruit of it um, I don't try to, con I'm not here to convince anybody of anything. That's the, that's what changed for me when I um, became more conscious and more spiritual. And um, is that in Christianity, I had to try to convince you to believe what I believe. I had to kind of like, whatever it took to get you to say yes and, and start reading your Bible and come into church with me and stuff like that. And that was the goal to win every conversation. I'm just sharing my experiences and, and sharing what's working for me. And, uh, and, and my story is my story. And, and, and your story is yours. And, and you know what I'm saying? Nobody can, can speak against that. That's my testimony. Um, 
And so it changes everything for me to having to win and combat and theology and doctrine, which I used to do. And I don't like that anymore. That's why I try not to speak about a lot of dividing stuff. Um, I just let you know my experience with it. I don't even, I'm not even like telling people to do any of this stuff. Here's my story. If it calls you, it calls you and you have to do it, which is what happened to me. So um, there's a difference there now for like trying to debate people or convince them. If they want to know, I'll gladly share and we can debate. I've studied scripturally on, on a lot of this stuff and where it is in the Bible. Actually, early on, I thought that that's what, what was going to happen. I thought that my Christian colleagues would call me out and say, hey, why are you talking about Orion? Where is that in the Bible? What is the Zodiac? What is all this in the Bible? The, that's not in this, the Bible is against astrology. I've got all the studies and that I dove into myself to be able to prove this kind of this, this new thought, which is a very ancient thought where the Bible comes from, but none of them did. You know, and I was I was ready for to to debate them and to show them and win them over because, mm. you know, m most true believers, like if you could show them something in the Bible, they'll believe it. If I can show you where this was used or where this was done and in this context, then I can win you over. That's how I am anyway. And, you know, that 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 conversation never really happened. And so I just kind of uh, talk about this stuff on my podcast and just people who are open, they'll ask questions and I could tell if they really want to know or they just want to debate or belittle you or whatever the case is. So you just kind of got to feel people out and just see where they're coming from too. Yeah. I think that's a much better approach. It's certainly more genuine and it makes me want to peace. listen. Yeah. I got more peace in my life now. I'll say that much. Well, that too. It also makes me want to, it also makes me more curious to know more and like yeah. to ask you like, Hey, you know, what about this? I'm trying to sell you something. Hey, right. come, come to my church. <laughs> exactly. Um, let's talk a little bit about aliens. That sounds fun. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so I'd love to know just like, uh, you, you know, what, what's your opinion uh, regarding the uh, extraterrestrials? Yeah. Um, I don't know much, you know what I'm saying? To pinpoint, I've seen a lot. I've experienced a lot. Um, for me, it's in the same conversation of what we would call angels, um, messengers that are that are watching over humanity that have been here since the beginning, uh, since we were primitive. And, um, and the scriptures talks about, you know, angels traveling back and forth from heaven to earth and those kind of things. And so I kind of did some studies in the Bible and um, watched some some videos and stuff like that that had me go out and ask God in my prayer closet to see something. And I would go out night after night until I saw something and I really wanted to know and I would end up seeing crazy things in the night sky. Um, stars that are have been there for two hours move. Stars fly across the sky tag another star and it flies off a different direction like they traded spots and uh things coming out of stars i've seen what we would call fleets of ufos during the day during the night so much stuff that just blows my mind and it's just like what's going on so uh i know i've seen a lot i've experienced a lot i've studied a lot but i still can't tell you exactly just when i put my finger on it there's so much more uh, to what meets, you know what I'm saying, than what meets the eye. Um, so I do believe that they are, uh, well, we'll call them angels. Well, even if they're like an advanced civilized race from, you know what I'm saying, from another star system or planet, and they travel here with technology that far surpasses ours and maybe a spirituality that surpasses ours as well, they're angelic benevolent uh, entities that uh, are watching over humanity. And if there's any war or any evil angels that that is going on, then I believe that they're here on the earth and it is our government that is involved with them and the things that they're doing to humans and they're okay with it and everything that's uh, taking place now. That's my uh, belief as far as what's going on and, and my experiences of being able to see things and encounter things as well. Yeah, I think that kind of... Um resolves too with the idea of, of free will, you know, the more benevolent, the more open and allowing sort of energy that that sort of lighter, higher consciousness, sort of uh, spirit, um, you know, and, uh, and then you've got, you know, sort of low, lower consciousness that are just trying to manipulate and trying to force and trying to trick and get what yeah. they want right now, you know, quick gratification. Um, it's interesting. I, and I, and I can only imagine it's like you were talking about, um, you know, plant medicine and you, that may be opening you up to certain spirits and things like that. I'm, I'm sure it probably can open you up to positive and negative spirits as well as potentially those aliens 
you know, from another distant land. They could be benevolent. They could be malevolent. I don't know. Um, but it's interesting. I've seen some things too. Like I've seen, uh, like you said, like some lights in the sky go up, move, um, just strange things. It would be, you know, statistically very unlikely that there's not other, you know, uh, <laughs> other beings in the universe yeah. and, you know, especially in an ever expanding yeah. sort of universe. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I have an idea. I can't put my finger on it and to tell you like, those are the, you know, the, the, uh, Palladians or the Octurians sure. who travel here every third Saturday to, right. you know, to visit during a certain sun cycle, which people do. And I think they're lying. I <laughs> agree, know? dude. I've seen and experienced so much and I still don't know what the hell is going on. Right. You know, and maybe that's a prideful statement that I should know and need, you know, but um, I, 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 it's a lot, it's very slippery. I'll say that much, you know. Oh, it definitely is. And I think there's a lot of charlatans out there. I mean, like there's plenty of false prophets in any movement. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people who are channelers and they talk to the Galactic Federation and all that stuff. And, you know, I'm not saying that that's not possible, but I also Those, think, I hope they're right, but I don't yeah, think they are. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't I don't trust them either. I mean, again, it's just, you know, like I said, it, it could be uh, even if it is true. I still like to make fun of it because like it, even no matter what, like, you know, you can still have a sense of humor about something, even if you believe it. And I think you that's, have to, yeah, you have to, that's how, you know, you know what I mean? If it's, if you're yeah. not sensitive about it, then you're like pretty settled. You're yeah. like, yeah, that's fine. But make fun of the Pleiadian star seeds all you want, bro. Because you you're know, still I'm coming settled. here every third Saturday. <laughs> that's right. Bro. <laughs> Knocking on your door in like a, a Jehovah's witness outfit, you know, yeah. <laughs> what's up, man. You got some arms. But, um, but yeah, man, I, I think that's really, really interesting. I, I, I love your take on, on all of this. And I mean, obviously, you know, nobody has all the answers. None of us really can know. Uh, so I believe that, I believe that anything that you can fathom is real. I believe that all the, I believe all scenarios are true, whether they're on different timelines and you bring them into this timeline, even if it's with some weird law of attraction stuff that it didn't exist until you thought it up and, and, and encountered it. Um, I've seen so much, you know, and what are they? What is it? Fairies, elementals, demons, angels, all of that. I've seen it all. Um, and I believe that almost like anything that you can, you can fathom exists, whether it is QAnon conspiracy stuff, whether it is underground bases where aliens are meeting with the government, you know, I, I'm sure everything exists man yeah well that's that's what's crazy so the idea of eternity or infinity uh it would have to right so yeah when we look at the quantum angle of things it's that literally everything already does exist right and so we're pulling it out of the ether when we have this experience you know i had experiences when i was uh, in the church at like 17 where i would see like a spirit you know i like and i asked you know are you of god and it's like freaking head like did this and went sideways and then did like this. So it was really saying no, but it was looking like, yes, you know, and I like saw this thing and I was like, oh my God. And I was like, get out of here. And it freaked me. It freaked me out. I've seen all kinds of crazy stuff too, but like to understand from the quantum level, it's like you said, everything is real. And so, you know, understanding it, like the dream world itself, that's like the dream of, of God. That's where everything literally exists because In the like, imagination Exactly. Yeah. And so like we learned in, I learned in college and psychology class is like, um, oh, well, when you, when you dream at night, uh, your memories are compressed. Well, then why do I see a nine headed monster that I've never seen before ever in my life in my dreams, something that I, literally does not exist at all on this, on this plane. It's like, well, the reason why is because I'm going into the dream world at night and I'm experiencing a reality that is literally composed of every single possibility of infinity that exists, which is like God, in, you know? Mm -hmm. So understanding that, I, I love kind of how you put that, understanding that like it, it, it allows for everything to be in existence. And then, yeah, we, we can pull it. We can pull it from there to here. Yeah. And that's ultimately the idea of like manifestation, you know, reality creation. Mm -hmm. Synchronicities, um, how, yeah. what the hell is happening there, you know? Um, all that stuff. Yeah. I think the only real danger there is uh, to get into like a solipsistic 
uh, mentality, you know, where people believe that they're the only uh, conscious entity or something like that. Like I'm the yeah. only one that really exists. And it's like, no, no, we're sharing this. Truman Show. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. The Truman Show thing. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. I, 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 I knew a schizophrenic friend of mine who watched that and it bugged him out, buddy. I thought there was cameras <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Well, there are cameras everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> he was right. That was 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. But no, I mean, I mean, I think that's the danger, the slippery slope sort of thing, because, you know, we're all here, we're all sharing this reality. So we're co-creating it. And so to sim to oversimplify it and say, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm the only one who's creating this reality. If I were the only one who was creating this reality, we would not be in the middle of all this stuff right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, that's the one like sort of caveat that I try yeah. and throw out there to, po to folks. Yeah, like, I am God or whatever. Well, yeah. get yourself out of this one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Why exactly. Did you this? <laughs> yeah. exactly, exactly right. Um, so I think that's maybe a little bit, um, I don't know, sim simplistic, but at the same time, I 100% agree with you, man. That like every every one of those realities, it's all out there. It's all possible, and it's all uh, already in existence, you know, mm -hmm. all the way forward in time, all the way backward in time, and yeah. everything in between. Uh, which is yeah, I mean, I even like you, you know, just to toy with the idea with the UFO stuff. Like, was that stuff out there, and I just seen it, or did I like will it to happen, and it showed itself to me? Because yeah. I believe in that as well. You know, what you believe shows itself to you. So did I bring that into this dimension and this reality? And I look for it hard enough until I found it. Or was it out there and I just changed my, you know, what I was looking at to be able to see the things that are, you know, going on above our head uh, every day. And, you know, honestly, that, that was like one of the biggest takeaways from all of that is more conscious, more spiritual is that, listen, this stuff is, is happening. Anybody can see it. Anybody can go out and stargaze, but you're too concerned with the things going on around you. You know, the, the, the things that are, um, you know, you're so earthly minded that you're no heavenly good or you just all you have to do is look up and it's there and you would have been able to see it the whole time. That kind of idea, you know, yeah, I'm preoccupied with the things of this world. Yeah, that's good, man. Yeah, I really like that. Those are good questions. They, uh, Robert Anton Wilson's book, uh, Prometheus Rising, he has like a lot of, uh, at the end of each chapter, questions like that. He's like, mm. imagine a quarter on the sidewalk. And he's like, now in whenever it is that you see it, when you find that quarter, ask yourself one question. Did you put that quarter there with your mind or did you see it because you were looking for it? You know, mm -hmm. and, you know, these questions, who knows, we don't know the answer. Uh, and if, it, you know, depending on what your experience is, if it seems, <laughs> if it seems like you put yeah. it there, does it matter? You know, <laughs> that's, that's another question on top of that question. So it's just like, it's a little bit. Uh, yeah, because then you see there's like other movies and stuff that kind of work like that. And something happened, maybe like the secret window. You remember that movie? And mm -hmm. then at the end, there's always these twists in those movies and that Shyamalan type movies. And uh, it's like, it was you the whole time. Right. He, he was interacting with someone else outside of him and fighting him. And the guy was actually killing people, but it was a persona that was outside of him. But the whole time it, it was literally him, maybe a part of his, his, his conscious that he wasn't, you know, he felt like it wasn't him. It was something outside of him. You know, and that's a huge part of it as well, I believe, where we talk about, you know, light and darkness and good and evil. They all exist within, but uh, it helps us to compartmentalize things or project it onto a Satan figure or who is the or a Democrat or Republican. You know what I'm saying? Versus like, no, you guys wanted this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Fight Club is kind of the same, yeah, it's fight same club, sort of yeah. thing, you know, where he. It oh, was, yeah. I couldn't do it. Well, right. that's the channeling thing, dude. I did a, I made a little documentary you should check out on channeling. Yeah. Um, but it was about mask, about wearing mask. And so the mask allows you to say things that you would never say. You know, we look at the band Slipknot. And when they put the mask on, something takes over. They get to tap into the animalistic nature and say and do things that Corey Taylor would never say in a million years. Or, and the, the same is true with a, a young, shy, timid person when they put the uh, ventriloquist on. The, you know, the puppet would say things that this young kid would never say. And then channeling, you mentioned channeling, the same thing. As long as it's not me, I'm not the scapegoat. Christian prophetic movement. God says this, and I cover all of that. The eight ball, you know, the magic, uh, uh, the, the tarot cards, the cards say this versus like 
I can tell you, I can, you can, whether it's reading energy, whether it's tapping into the depths of your soul or the Akashic records, or you just feel strongly about something, you don't want to say it because of the fear of ridicule. So you need a scapegoat. Hmm. And I feel like channeling and all of that stuff, it, it gives you the scapegoat. So it opens you up to be able to share things you would never say or even writing under a pen name, keyboard cowards, if you will. There's people who would tell you stuff on the internet they would, that they would never tell you to your face. You and know? that's really, really good. It goes uh, hand in hand with the Stanley Milgram experiments too, uh, out in California in the 60s. They had a bunch of students who signed up for a psychology experiment. And uh, some of them they designated as prisoners and the others they designated as, as policemen. And they gave them, you know, uh, they gave them dark sunglasses to wear over their eyes, the police. And they, and they started to take on these attributes, these characteristics yeah. of the cops and the prisoners. And they started to treat each other, even though the people in the prisons, they were students, just like the people on the other <laughs> side were students, you know, but then they yeah. start doing this role play without yeah. even, you know, Become uh, real. it's crazy. Yeah. I'll definitely check that documentary out, man. I'll put a link to it in the show notes as well. Absolutely. Sure. I think that's really interesting. Uh, I have a friend who's a musician as well, and he created a character, uh, uh, this like uh, sort of country wild card type of character that whenever he was having a hard time writing, uh, he would tap into this character and he yeah. named the character Quiff Sweeter, which sounds dirty, but it's not. Uh, <laughs> but he's like, you know, Quiff Tweeter, man, he always writes hit songs. So he could just yeah. tap into this character, this yeah. country music star and, you know, come, come off with this bravado and this idea uh, of who that particular character is and tap yeah. into that and then just write a song that day, you know? And so I think I'm that's... Power. I did the same thing. I have a, a character and that's what kind of makes this real for me. Cause I know when I go into character, like, you know, Derek literally steps back and, and did I create him? Did he exist? Is he a persona from all the, for me, it's a country person too. Is it all the Southern twain country men I've met in my life that, you know, I, I go on, I, I do prank calls with it and stuff like that. And <laughs> I'll, I'll say things as that character that I would never say, even if it's the truth, I found myself saying things that are true that I would never say because of, I want to say face. I don't want you to think that I really feel this way and I value our friendship enough not to go there with you. But if I go in the character, I'm going to give it to you. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and it's real. it makes me think again, going into all the prophetic stuff or God says this and you need to watch out. God doesn't like gays. No, no, no. You don't like gays. God's okay with them. You don't like them. So why is it happened to be that God hates the same things that you hate? Wow. How, how, uh, yes. you know, you know, how, how fitting. You know? Yeah, right. No, that's great, man. That's, I, I love that. I can, I can feel that too. You know, you tap in like, and I do, you know, I do comedy. So improv comedy, you know, yep. each theme, you know, it, it just requires a different uh, reaction to that scene. Comedy, um, same thing. I'm sure there's stuff Theo Vaughn and, and all these comedians would never tell you unless they're in a bit and people get upset. But for them, hey, it's a bit, man. It's part of the show. Yeah, you got to do it. Yep. And it, it, and it's and that's part of the appeal, too, that makes it real and fun and, and exciting is, you know, they're going to level with you. Like if it was just you know, uh, if it was toned down or watered down, then it, you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to mess with it. Yeah. Well, any, any time like the, you know, the, the comedian goes in on the audience, like any, in, in any other situation, you're walking down the street and there's a random dude, like making fun of you or making fun of your girlfriend or something. You're going to hold on. This isn't, what are you doing? But in, because we're here, it makes it okay. Kind of thing. Mm -hmm. that's big too with cults and <laughs> little you know places that are like safe zones for weird behavior you know yeah that's Thank just you. an example and i think that that's you know there's nothing wrong with that but you know i've been in i've been a part of cults i'll say that you know that weird stuff's okay with I love it, man. That's great. Well, dude, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me today. I'm going to uh, put links uh, in the show notes, truthseeker.com. Is there anything you want to uh, let my folks know about where, where they can uh, find more of your work or anything? Yeah, everything's on? there. There's a portal to, uh, you know, my music, my music videos, my, my, uh, my podcast, uh, everything that I'm working on, it can get, you can get to it through there. And I'm on all the social media platforms as well. So thanks for having me, bro. And I'm, I look forward to digging deeper into your story. I know we got you set up for my podcast as well, and it'll be fun. I enjoyed our talk.
Man, I did too. Thank you so much. I'm going to be following you. And yeah, your, your site looks great, man. And uh, great job. I uh, really appreciate all your work. Thanks for doing what you do. It's, it's, it's beautiful. And you know, you kind of, uh, you kind of opened me up today and I, and I do appreciate that. Um, thanks for being so sincere and, and courageous, man, because you're, you know, you're doing this even in the face of fear. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. So thank you for sure. it. And, you too, uh, bro. Thank you. I, yeah. I look forward to chatting again. Thank you so much.